Oh, right. Oh, right, man. What is up? Episode 8, Planet Xbox Podcast. We are back. Feels like a short week, but today's a chill episode. So I am your host, the Best Bot Kid Smooth, and I got my co-host, Mountain Dew Drinking, Lord Gaming Attic. What is up? Hey, I got to go with the uh, the stigma, man. I got to go with the stigma. You know, they... <laughs> These people in this Discord love to go at me for drinking some Mountain Dew. So you know what? It's I'm a Mountain drinking motherfucker. <laughs> it's it's the perfect stereotype for for an an Xbox or Dew Bro game. Mountain Dew, a a, a Dew controller. You don't got a Dew controller, but you do got that pretty Starfield controller in the back. You know, I wish my setup where I could like have my stuff displayed, but I can't. I would literally have to roll up my window and like stage all my stuff on this thing. Like I wouldn't be able to show off my off. stuff. What are you about to do? Oh, uh, I don't have to put that. I was trying to get the the glare off the the posters as much as possible. Nah, people can see it. It's, De- it's, it's Demon Slayer and Super Mario Brothers movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I plan on getting a third one in the middle and mm-hmm. swapping them like every couple months. Okay, that sounds sounds cool. That's what I need a, a man cave for. So. Today's episode is, you know, a little different. We need uh, some help. We're not recording this on the normal day we would do because of uh, work conflicts. Um, so we asked Twitter for some help for some questions, and I got the Patreon questions loaded up. But we're gonna go with the Twitter ones uh, first. Um, no, I got the Patreon ones. Like they, they pay. Go with theirs first. Yeah, but if I feel we like get, I feel like we're gonna we spend get... more time than the, uh, on the Patreon questions. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll make That's it thing. very quick. Yeah. There, and, and we'll go in detail with the Patreon one absolutely absolutely so let's get it started so uh thanks uh shout out to uh weapon will shout out to bg uh the whole entire weapon will community uh you know um as you guys know eight episodes in playing xbox now part of weapon will uh patreon so uh again uh short notice on the episode we're doing this a little bit uh, earlier than we typically do it so Usually we get around like, you know, six to eight questions on uh, Patreon. So we went to, you know, get some more. So we asked, open up the questions to Twitter. Uh, Baron J67, um, love one. So we're going to start with the questions that were asked on Twitter first, and then we'll go on uh, Patreon. Don't expect a super long episode. This is going to be the most chill episode between um, uh, me and Attic. And we're just going to really just sort of like talk about things uh, going on this week. So Baron J67 from Level One Gaming. Uh, shout out to Level One, man, and shout out to Fame. They did a nice article in regards to um, the whole, you know, YouTubers and you know, and, and journalists, you know, taking advantage of the console war. I'll probably talk about that a little bit later. But he says, "Do you think, regardless of the ABK outcome, will ABK Games be a part of Game Pass, similar to Riot, EA, and Ubisoft?" You at it? Yes. You think so? You think Activision Games? Uh, um i don't think it would be permanent kind of thing mm-hmm. but i do think they will be in game pass i do think they uh sign an agreement uh, i think what happens is because playstation's deal expires in 2024 um i think they work out something you know as an act of good faith they probably won't be obviously brand new games but they'll probably put a bunch of uh back catalog games in their stuff stuff that isn't really like uh selling much but they're still attractive so i think something like that would happen aaron edwards says do you see games such as final fantasy skipping the xbox platform due to lower sales potential short-sighted in my opinion if a game if game franchises consistently put their franchises on xbox they have a chance to grow a game's popularity and fan base over time what do you say i think this is a perfect question for you um because you spoke about this a couple of times so i figured yeah. i've spoke about this a lot here's the thing it's not going to get better overnight microsoft has to nurture that genre you know it's the same way they nurtured the first person market you got to you know build up a fan base of these type of games they're doing you know stepping stones such as getting games like you know persona in game pass you know we're seeing persona 3 going in game pass day and day it's something that doesn't happen overnight but if square enix wants to play hardball maybe for a game pass bag maybe you know maybe the sales are that bad i don't think it's that because 
to me, if the sales were that bad, smooth, and correct me if I'm wrong, would you have put Final Fantasy Crisis Core on the Xbox platform? Um, no, if they're being, if I'm being consistent, I would not. Um, and that's the biggest issue with Square Enix to me. They're inconsistent. It's like, yeah, for the most part, they don't support Xbox, but they somewhat, they still, they'll put like a crisis core. They'll put like the game that's coming out in the, was it a couple months on there? Uh, the Dragon Quest action adventure game that's coming out, the action mm -hmm. RPG, which I'm actually quite interested because I wanted to get into Dragon Quest. I'm just not a turn based fan. Um, I and I wasn't, was good. I beat 11. It was really good. Okay. And that's turn based though, right? Yes. Yeah. But, it's an option. You don't have to play it turn base. Really? Is Dragon Quest Eleven on Xbox? It. Yes, it was in Game Pass, but it was took out of Game Pass. Okay. So you know, it, it, you look look up some gameplay stuff. You know, it's one of those things where you could choose how you want to play it. I did choose the the turn base, and you know, regardless what BG wants to say, yeah, I'm talking to you, BG. You didn't be Dragon Quest Eleven. Because Dragon Quest XI has one of those things where it ends, but it doesn't end. And, and normally I'll give BG, like, optional endings, as long as you beat the standard, it matters. But that additional probably three or four hours, maybe that's pushing, I don't know. But that additional little bit after you beat the game is relevant to the story, continues the storyline. It's like equivalent of, you know, playing a game and then not playing you know, a, a key part of maybe a, a DLC or something that continues that story and finishes it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say that BG beat the game, but he didn't finish the journey, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I know he doesn't care, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> to answer uh, his question, seems like, I think... The, the, I don't think people do it because of uh, sales, because there, there's always way to monetize on Xbox. There's ways to make money on Xbox. Xbox, we know Xbox overpays for things that, you know, PlayStation and Nintendo doesn't have to pay for. Um, so there is money to be made on Xbox. And I don't think everything is due to low sales. Um, and then I think it, I think it's a combination between a PlayStation partnership mm -hmm. and a con uh, that between that and the fact that they they know what they hold out, mm -hmm. and this might not necessarily be Square Enix because I think that's a little bit more on the PlayStation mm -hmm. part, but I think they know they can get that Game Pass back, like Capcom with uh, Mega Man uh, Legacy Collection. I think though they hold that for a little bit, they can get that Game Pass back, and regardless what people think, that Game Pass back is substantial, and Microsoft be dropping, you know, a lot of money to put games in Game Pass, and I know that that is it. And my question to you, Smooth, is if Microsoft knows they're doing this, how do you combat it? If Microsoft knows that would be a negative effect of mm -hmm. Game Pass, if this is that truly publishers happening. are holding out on pu publishing games on their platform to get a premium Game Pass payout later on. Later on, um, they buy them. That's how they respond. No, I, I, the sound, but think about it. If that's the only way you're going to stop like overpaying or paying for a bundle of games. It's like, if I'm Xbox, right? I would only pay, for, I would go for like double A and indie publishers and give them like a premium to put all of their releases in Game Pass day and date. Don't have to buy exclusive exclusivity, but if I'm, I'm going to Annapurna, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to the people that does like all the 1017 games, all the indies, and in, because in, is they're not going to cost as much to get like a bundle of Ubisoft game, catalog or Activision's catalog for anybody major like Square Enix and Capcom and and, and not knowing the cost potential, you 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 have to buy them because in order for Game Pass to be possible, the thing is is Netflix. What did Netflix do when it first came out? They kept buying and buying and buying content to put in the subscription until they made enough money where they can produce their own content so that the content that they're putting in is all like essentially first party, right? Um, and the Xbox has to do that and, and they have to, unfortunately, they have to buy their way to that portion. So you buy, you have to buy a, some of the biggest publishers that pretty much puts out, uh, are responsible for the output of gaming releases annually. So. You have to buy the publishers that release games annually. Activision is a start. 
E, like I'm not suggesting this, but like you have to buy like an EA or a Sega. I would say you know Sega because they release games every year, um, different types of games. It just helps the output. So how do they combat that? They combat it by uh, buying them. And once the Xbox get to a point where they're literally putting out essentially maybe seven to ten games a year on Game Pass, like from their own they'll be all right and then they don't have to make those deals and those deals get like honestly cheaper um and, and, and cheaper to combat um do, go do ahead. you think that that's like realistic though to like the, that to me that's like the that have you ever seen the bench warmers no, i've heard of it i don't think i watched the full yeah, so, so there is a, a little kids getting bullied mm-hmm and he and he goes to his dad and his dad pretty much buys the stadium or builds the stadium mm-hmm. so like because they couldn't play in like a little park mm-hmm. so he buys a giant stadium for him so like to me that's even worse because there is a lot of companies that will try to drive up their value because they know microsoft got it and then i feel like you're gonna have more companies with holding because they're like okay man let's get that bethesda bag let's do it like to me and I know people aren't going to like this. Microsoft's just going to have to like play ball, like hardcore ball. It's going to be like, okay, you want a Game Pass bag? Let's just cut straight to the point. If you want a Game Pass bag, your game has to come out on our platform day one or you will not get a Game Pass bag. And now if you well, want I'm to gonna, sign I'm, gonna, a, I'm sorry. Now I'm, if you want, if, real quick. Now, if you want to sign a deal, let's say, yo, I'll put your game there day one. And you'll give me that Game Pass back up front, and it'll come out on your platform six months from now. Do stuff like that, but you cannot just let companies hold you at hostage. Now, if this is this is actually happening, I don't know. But to me, it makes sense. And if that really is happening, they need to do their best to show, like, this won't stand here. You won't hold me hostage. If you want this money... You're going to at least make sure the game comes out on our platform and you'll get it later. Kind of like the indie thing where it's like, if you don't release the indies on PlayStation, don't release it. But they're going to have to do that with Game Pass. Like, if your game is in on our platform day one, you're not... It, obviously, there's exceptions. You know, games up until now, if it's not on Game Pass, if it's not on Xbox, that's different. But if, if like, game, like, games like Mega Man Legacy, there's no reason that game's not on Xbox. Is it is it because there's some type of Game Pass thing going on? I don't know. But if Microsoft went to them a couple months before the game came out and was like, well, a couple months after the game started uh, being development, it was like, if you want a Game Pass bag, here's our agreement. And part of the agreement is it has to come to our platform or you're not, you, uh, what's more, you, you don't meet the requirements to be on Game Pass. How long before that's, enforce because they can't just say it they have to enforce it before companies start to you know okay we can't get the game pass back it's got to come to it and not to mention that might actually change where it's like a company wasn't going to bring their game to xbox at first but they're like i have to port it if i want the game pass back later so it's got to be on the platform yeah um I'm, there's things they can uh do i don't know like the in all and be all for for their uh getting games on game pass and what they will what they will institute um and i don't know who does microsoft i i assume microsoft approaches publishers and developers for game pass deals i don't know if it's the other way around i think indie indie developers might approach microsoft and microsoft might approach like the triple a's for or uh, you know high double a for uh select games but they got to do something to help combat it and i'm gonna ask another question that might you know you know, that's going to extend upon this, but I'm going to wait until after we uh, get through the questions. Um, Carlos Claudio says, are there any multiplayer games that you're currently playing? What multiplayer game would you like to see make a return? Um, I'm not current. Well, I was, I guess AEW counts. I've been playing that online um, and been winning um i play my fair share of sports games so i'll be playing like obviously madden and you know i haven't played 2k in a little while um 
I generally I still play Halo as a as my multiplayer shooter. I go and me and my son go in and we just play that for an hour or two. Um, but I don't have like a game that I'm dedicated to online right now. Neither do I. I, I actually feel like a lot of multiplayer games is very underwhelming these days. Yeah. And we get a lot of like rinse and repeats. And it's not like saying that the product's bad or anything. A lot of people like these type of games and that's why they keep making them. But to me personally, I they're just not my cup of tea. No, you're right. A lot of multiplayer games are chasing the same thing that for they're trying to be either Fortnite or they're trying to be like Apex and stuff like that. And I'm personally not into those type of games. I'm not into seasonal gaming um i like standard i just like standard multiplayer and, and that's you know going away to the wayside uh with people you know my age um like i just like playing games for a little bit and then on to the next i don't want to dedicate uh myself to a single game and to his battle passes or anything like that that's why i'm i'm not the ideal halo infinite player because i don't play for seasons the only reason why i'm looking forward to seasons for like new maps and and new modes that they may introduce but i'm not looking to complete do anything with the battle pass i want my classic ranking system you know my my ranking my number my badge whatever but i don't care about completing seasons i don't chase anything for i completed one battle pass and that was it and i'm not going to complete another because i don't think it's necessary because i don't care about the incentives uh, or the rewards for doing a battle pass um but great questions uh for twitter now we're going to get into the patreon questions um, and shout out to the folks over at Patreon. Thank you for your support. Um, definitely helps the podcast. So we got uh, about four questions. So first question comes from my truck nuts. Wow. He says, question for the best spot. What do you like most about your Xbox versus your PC? What do I like most about my Xbox versus my PC? see i'm going to say consistency so i built the pc um and i've upgraded it I, i'm on my full upgrade i'm probably i need to probably do another upgrade uh to have those situations where my console just can't do it or the console is just not a, a way to play this game i've also you know did the pc just so i can also take advantage of those playstation releases that's coming out on um pc but what I like about console over PC is uh, consistency. So, for example, if I'm going to play a game like, um, like for example, a game like Ghostwire Tokyo, I didn't play it on P uh, on PlayStation because um, I, I, I didn't really care. I knew it was going to be coming out on Xbox, and then when it did come out on Xbox, it would be on Game Pass. But uh, somebody from the community actually gifted it to me on PC, so I played it there. Now, my performance on PC was extremely inconsistent. So now, yes, I'm getting high frame rates, but the thing is the the peak frame rate versus the lower frame rate I would get was so drastic. Like one moment I could be I'll be playing at, you know, 80, 90 frames per second. And then the next moment I'm down to like 20, 17 and it would happen consistently no matter what I would do to the settings. It's just that performance is not consistently great and i can't stand when people run with the message like oh pc is the best platform play on pc you're always gonna get it and then people talking about all this about starfield and stuff like that and same thing with redfall right i i was like okay i don't have to play redfall on xbox if i want 60 fps i'll play on pc my problem is i'm not consistently getting 60 fps on pc and it's not like i'm standing around 50 it's a drastic difference i'm somewhere between 37 and and, and 42 and it's in a popping still exists on pc i get the popping on um, pc it's not a perfect uh platform it's not a good substitute to the point where i just stopped playing it because the performance is too inconsistent like you know what i mean um so the thing is, there are experiences that I had where PC was great. Now, I eventually beat uh, Ghostwire Tokyo on, on PC, but it took me a long time because I would stop playing from time to time because of the performance. performance. Now, when I played on Xbox, it was a better experience because the performance was more consistent. When I was playing at the 60 FPS mode, 
it was consistent with this performance range. VRR kicked in, it stayed closer to the 60 FPS mode. I didn't bother with the 120 FPS mode because I know it would be all over the place. Uh, when I played a game like Redfall, it was also consistent, but I was kind of like turned off. So I didn't have a lot of play time on um, Xbox. Um, the games that I did enjoy playing on PC were games like uh, Spider-Man uh, Remastered, a game like, um, what else did I uh, do on PC uh, recently? Oh man, I've done, uh, I, playing games on the Rogue Ally, I really don't count, I, I count that as like a an extension, a so handheld. a handheld. So I be, I did the game Bramble, I've been playing a little bit of Out of Worlds, been playing a little bit I've been of- i hearing a lot of good stuff about that Bramble. Game. Bramble is a, a good game, but to all my, uh, 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 to all my uh believers and in, in, in christian folk say a prayer after you play a game there's a lot of witchcraft in there um it's like and they get deep into the uh witchcraft section and it doesn't make sense because by the time you get to the end of the game it's like bro like like it, it has this moments it, they do a couple things well i thought i was playing when i first started playing uh bramble i thought i was playing a sneak peek of fable in terms of like what we saw in the trailer when they were being chased around by that that that, that the giant or whatever um it, it had some cool things about it i like the game good game pass uh get um but yeah pc is like i said if you if you like playing games on pc you like playing games on pc um pc gaming to me is, is more so as a, as a substitute it's not my uh like primary to select games i will play on there um and I just don't like the inconsistency of the performance and the fact that in order to get what I want out of performance, I kind of have to do work. I have to upgrade some stuff. And I'm at a point where at this point, my next upgrade I'm is probably going to require, I have to upgrade my CPU at this point and to upgrade my CPU. I'm going to have to upgrade my motherboard and that's, and I don't feel like doing that. Um, so I'm kind of at a, a standstill. Rog Ally, definitely ha highly recommend. I only put select games on here. Um, I'm only playing games like Bramble, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, there was another game that I downloaded. Oh my God, the Arcade Paradise, man. That's what I've been playing a lot on the Rogue Allies. There's some games literally on Game Pass that I didn't install on my console that I've only installed installed on a Rogue. Uh, there's this uh, Mega Pixel 3 just came out, installed that on a Rogue. Um, so good good things good things good things and i said i'm um, like sex 62 times i'm so sorry addict but that th well, this doesn't well, count well, you say that? this where doesn't you count that? because i said i won't say it on a video so uh but shout out to uh my truck that's a good question jack jack thomas or jack was thomas he says what's your honest thoughts on the state of gaming do you believe it's gotten better or worse addict Yes and no. I think the quality, like it used to be, we'd get like one or two really, really high quality games. I feel like that's not as much. This year's really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like microtransactions has gotten out of hand the past couple of years. I feel like uh, the the line between free to try and free to play has gotten very thin because a game like Destiny, it, it is technically a free to play game, but when you play as a free to play player there's nothing on there that you can really do. They're pretty much demanding that you buy the game. So I think that's one of the biggest issues. I, I will say that quality of the, the highest games, they've gotten better. You know, uh, Elden Ring, Resident Evil 4, hopefully Starfield, Zelda. You know, I, I'm enjoying playing those games, but I would say that those games come so far between now. Yeah, um, I'm with you. It's like the also thing to consider where I where when I enjoy gaming the most, I was younger. Uh, obviously, the 360 generation was my favorite generation of games. Uh, it's where I opened up my appetite to different you know type of games and, and multiplayer. The Xbox One is where you know I matured. It, be, it, it became more of a social platform gaming is more social now so i don't find the games is as fun as they once were uh or as intriguing 
and I feel like games nowadays obviously is taking longer to come out. So it, it, it it's it's like right now what they're able to achieve with like you know you know with graphics and and and, and story and, and and with the consoles like in their capability is all great. But to me, in my opinion, games aren't as fun and gaming isn't as fun and multiplayer isn't as fun. Do, do you think that's because of multiplayer and co-op have been sorely lacking the past couple of years? Probably. Because I feel like we mm-hmm. don't have no more Halo when it first came out moments, no more Gears when it first came out moments. Mm-hmm. You know, back when Modern Warfare 2 was popping, mm-hmm. like, I feel like you're not getting as much of those types of games. Like, when you think of, like, highly popular games, what do you think of? You think of, you know, some uh, a lot of the PlayStation games, Last of Us, God of War... I feel like there's less highly popular multiplayer games because I feel like we enjoy games, uh, you know, especially me and you, we enjoy games more when we're playing games uh, as a unit and yeah. not like yeah. separately. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's not a lot of good quality uh, co-op games. We've uh, I want to say the last game we've what was the last game we co-opted? I couldn't tell you. It's been that long. Wow. Cause I remember we did we built a whole all nighter for Halo Five Guardians. We did that like yeah, and then unfortunately Halo Infinite didn't have it, and they didn't have it, so we had we had to pay it separately. I know you played under the review embargo, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And um, damn, dude, uh, yeah, I can't even think of the last experience we we did Gears Five. That was a good experience. It was yeah, (laughs) that was a fun time. Besides, like. When all the people got access to the game and it like crashed the yeah, servers and yeah. for some reason they put the game by uh, the peer to peer like just to play the game for some reason. Yeah, there was also uh, what's that dude that did it takes two a way out was one which was that was fun a fun experience, but those games yeah it's too far in between those co op experiences just aren't just really happening uh the way that they need to so i would say gaming is probably you know for me it's in the worst for others it probably in a better state bg stupid jk his uh, his comment says how do you feel about microsoft trying to buy sega do you think it will matter or it, it doesn't also how would you feel about xbox giving their own superhero exclusive like playstation with spider-man I know Microsoft owns any don't doesn't own any rights to any comic characters, but I think it would be cool to see Black Panther, Namor, or Punisher, etc. Game be exclusive to Xbox. Um, we've had this conversation before, not on this uh, podcast, but we had the conversation in general. I think ever since yeah, you know, Spider Man made a, uh, a couple videos yeah. about it, saying that they need their own. I was actually going to make a a video, I still might make it, saying that they need to get Spawn, because Spawn's movies just get one in early production and filming. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, here's the thing, like, if you're going to make a game, don't base it around a movie. I, yeah. I don't like when they do that, because it puts them on a time frame. It, let's say they went out and got Spawn, you know, use Spawn's momentum, and, you know, even if Microsoft's like, yo, we're going to make a Spawn movie, make sure that movie's good, too. You know, even if Xbox has to fund the movie and the damn game, at mm. least if, the, if they get the best directors, because think about it, that would be a great investment. Yep. Okay, we're going to make sure the best people's over there making that damn movie. Yep. Because now when that movie pops off and people are talking about that, people go, oh, there's a Spawn game coming? Yeah. I think um, I'm not now Spawn. I don't think it's popular enough. I, I can see where a proper game could come out because of the skill set and its abilities. Um, That's why I was saying that if they did, mm-hmm. they, they would have to make sure they're involved in that movie process. Now, Microsoft don't know anything about making movies, but they could hire someone that is popular and knows what they're doing. Yeah, I think superhero. I mean, does Blade count? Um, Here's the thing, do, do you? I don't think they have access to any Marvel character. I really don't. I think you know. Then I, I can would never go prove full it. DC, but the thing is, is like, you that have to make a, uh, an agreement with Warner Brother. Which is possible. Like, I mean, without selling, they need to earn some. 
I don't know, man. Do they go with you? Know, we got Wonder Woman coming out. We I got think that's going to be good because it's got the Nemesis engine in it. We have. Uh, we don't know if it, there's no Superman game. I'm not feeling the. I mean, I haven't played Gotham Knights. I'm not sure with um with uh, what's the other one, Suicide Squad's uh, going to be. Um, the thing is, is that I feel like they they missed a wave because all DC movies are failing. They're like bombing at the box office. Um, but th- this is the. All right, so right now, Microsoft has an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, because all the DC movies are bombing. Even even if the, DC, Batman, Flash, Superman, there are, there are very few things that you can make a game about and do well as long mm-hmm. as the game's good that isn't in the mainstream media. And the DC properties is one of them. Spawn's mm-hmm. different. You have to have a good franchise behind Spawn. Spawn mm-hmm. movies got to come out and do well. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, you can have two Spawn movies out mm-hmm. before it takes the time to make one Spawn game. Yeah, yeah. So I, it is it, right now with DC in the in, in the in the condition they are. I would say if Microsoft popped up it was like, what we gotta do to make a a DC universe on the Xbox platform? You can make it on PC, but what do we got to do to make this possible? Where we start out with maybe Batman, or the, or right now I think the first movie that's really gonna come out that's gonna have a lot of hype behind. Uh, Gun, I think his name's Gun, isn't it? James Gun. Uh, you're asking the wrong dude. Yep. The dude from DC that's rebooting it. So mm-hmm. you know, I think his first one's going to be Spy a uh, Superman. So it's like they go to them like we want to make a DC universe on the Xbox brand. Keep in mind, Warner Brothers they fill in the hurt from Flash right now. So okay, how much are you going to give us for that? All right, wh- how much are you going to pay on marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And then, it, and then it's like, and then we want to branch out from that. We want to make a, a Flash game a couple years from now. Because uh, I think that right now Microsoft has the opportunity because they're probably not desperate because they knew this was going to happen. But I would say they're more into an opportunity of talking to, with them about it than them wait till James Gunner, if that's his name, until he redoes the, fr- uh, the, the DC Universe and gets it popular. And then you probably add, you have to add two zeros onto the contract to get it then. So it's just like, do it now. Start out with one game, a Superman game, because that's what the Superman thing. They just recently started talking about, I think they just got the cast for the new Superman. So all you have to do is, you know, it's like I said, don't put it on the Superman movie. Use the movie to hype the game. Don't do it the other way around. Yeah. I think um, I would actually be okay with a Shazam or Black Adam. I, I I think I I think Black Adam is really good. I'm I'm I don't know why like, but Shazam or Black Adam I think they they should do. I think it, it, it's most recent and they're somewhat recognizable. And I think that's a a, a story they can make their own. They can uh, go deep into that you know universe and take advantage of it. Um, so I would that's where I would probably go. If I'm Xbox, I would prefer I would like a Shazam game or Black Adam. Um, Dwayne Carter says, do you think the Xbox streaming box stick will make a debut within the next year? And how much do you think it'll cost? My guess is that they'll aim for ninety nine ninety nine with the controller and three months of Game Pass. I think it'll be one ninety nine. I think it'll be two hundred dollars. I don't think it's worth yeah, it at two hundred dollars. One fifty to two hundred dollars with a controller, and probably like three months of Game Pass with it. I mean, the whole point of them not releasing it was because they couldn't get it under what the, the they couldn't get it what under two hundred dollars. I think that's the reason why. So I don't think they'll release it at two hundred dollars. It has to be like the cheapest option. I think what happens is, uh, I think it happens, it, and it'll probably is, though, it, it it depends. Sorry, uh, let me just say something real quick. It depends mm-hmm. if it's if the the experience is worth it if the experience is worth it people would pay two hundred dollars if you can legit like if you can legitly take a thumb drive or whatever mm-hmm. or take like a roku box and plug it into your tv and play cloud computing at almost a one-to-one people will easily go out and buy it for two hundred dollars because they feel like they can play that console experience for half the cr- price it just got to work correctly mm-hmm 
Yeah, um, I don't think so. Clock is not. It's nowhere as good as in the Nvidia one. I think it has to improve to a certain degree before you, you know, put out a mass production item for it. If they do do it, I think they do it. You know, around the same time PlayStation drops PS5 Pro, is if that's uh, still a thing. Um, and I, I think that's how. Uh, they navigate that. Um, other than that, man, I don't, um, I don't know. I, I, I would put it if you're, if they're not going to do a actual series, um, you know, pro system to combat PS5 Pro, I think they will put out a stream box just to have something, something that's to the market, a cheaper option, something to promote. Well, if, they if they can't make the price point they want or the price point they think. Here's the thing. It just depends on the confidence they have in the product. If they have confidence that that, that cloud computing with that hardware, mm -hmm. that little support from that hardware they get is mm -hmm. going to do enough to where they feel like it's going to, you know, generate a somewhat console experience Then I feel like they have, they would have no problem raising that. But if they're trying to drop that at a at hundred bucks, when I don't know how much it costs to manufacture a controller, mm -hmm. but it, it retails at 60 so even if they're taking a a half point uh like an, an entire half of that and that's the only profit they have say it takes 30 dollars to generate and, and that's probably a little bit far-fetched it probably doesn't cost that much to do it yeah. but i'm giving them a lot of leeway yeah so you mean to tell me you're making the box for under 40 you know what i'm saying like so it, it just Maybe a hundred dollars just isn't realistically enough mm -hmm. for them to see a good margin and profit with giving them the controller yeah. and making the hardware device to go with it. But I don't know anything about that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't. Um, yeah, if they if they do it, like I said, it gotta be dirt cheap. And right now, there's a lot of devices that they're supporting. You got the Logitech. You got the Aces, which you can do, you know, xCloud on this, and it works fine. I've done, that's the only way I play, like, you know, Halo and stuff like that. And people Forza. are trying to get me to get the Steam Deck now. Uh, if you're going to get it, like, I don't understand people who have the Steam Deck and a Rogue Ally. It makes no freaking sense. I mean, I, I think w the smartest thing Xbox can do is sort of continue to partner with all these people making mobile PCs, make Windows the primary the operating system or if it's a dedicated gaming device make game pass operating system and and, and license game pass to all these operations i think they'll they'll make a killing that is they got to treat it like they got to treat it like office you know they got to treat it like office like get a partner with uh these people making these but don't they sell this shit on the, in the xbox store like can i buy one of these on the xbox store right now i don't know i've never tried um i don't really go to the xbox store like that no 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 on the xbox on the xbox you know how you can buy like an xbox console or a controller right from the xbox yeah, i store? don't i don't that that's what you I'm don't visit about. the store I don't go to that very to buy rarely games? do i go to that no no i'm talking about the portion where it sells hardware and stuff oh yeah i go there all the time i actually bought a series s on it like i've, no, I've, I've never done actually, that. that's how i got my i got my xbox one through no i got my xbox one x through the xbox store on xbox one like I, I was able to pre-order it that way. Um, but yeah, man. So I got a question to ask you, right? Because remember when the reports was coming out with this ABK deal and that, you know, and they were talking about like Game Pass not meeting there, you know. Are we done with the questions? We're done with the questions. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to everybody with their sure. questions. Shout out to you guys. Um, like they're not meeting these numbers. I think BG also asked this question, right? And it was an email Matt Booty said and um and they they said something about like you know going back on the first party games and that how if that fails you know people won't like forgive them and stuff like that but what if microsoft like have to pivot on game pass to make it to make their games more approachable so we know they can't stop they, they can't not put first party games on the service right that's a promise that they make but what if what if they made first party games available on game pass day one 
However, only for the first 30 days of release. So as soon as it release, it's on the service for a month. You got a month to play on Game Pass before and after that month, then you have to buy it. And then maybe it comes back on Game Pass in like six months and stays there permanently. Do you think that would have a positive impact on software sales? No, because I feel like the majority of the sales would be in that duration that you said it would be on Game Pass. If they wanted to pivot, they would have to take it out of Game Pass to six months. I don't think they're going to do that. Here's the thing. They could do that if they started releasing lit games. Because even if they went, it'd be a PR nightmare. But it's Starfield hit, Fable hit, Perfect Dart hit, Avowed hit, Outer Worlds 2 hit. We gonna shut our mouths and buy that damn game. But that is... That is a PR nightmare. You got to have the games to be able to do it. Imagine if they say, yo, you're going to have to buy our games now. And they still dog shit. They raised the price. If Redfall was the first $70 game, and they, and they came out with a $99 version. And it was. But I think they raised that price for Starfield. They didn't raise it for Redfall. So Redfall was just collateral damage. Because look, they they probably had some kind of ideal that Redfall was going to be uh, a nightmare to some degree. They're like, let's take the PR hit for Redfall. Let's not take the PR hit for Starfield. Yeah. Speaking of Starfield, it's now July seventh. We're less than two months away. When does this promotional onslaught come? Where game? Our people outside of that, I, I outside of Ryan McCaffrey gets to play it. When does like you know IGN gets traditional coverage? Where does uh, these journalists and stuff get traditional coverage? The rollout because they got to start showing this game off more normally now, uh, leading into September. I don't think you have to wait long. I, I, I'll talk to you more after the podcast, but I don't think you have to wait. Long. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um. There, uh, so Game Pass added, um, we talked a little bit about Bramble, um, which is a good game, but like I said, you know, if if you believe in God, pray um, after you play that game, because, you know, you expose yourself to certain things, and like, I like, there's so like, you know, I don't play certain games if I feel like I'm not really vibing with this, too much stuff, uh, too much for my mental, um, but it's a good game, recommend people playing. But you know, you just watch for certain stuff. Um, and it uh, was a it was a Game Pass gem that people are either sleeping on or haven't touched it because they didn't know anything beyond the title. Um, they there's another game that's been on that came out on Xbox. This is it's not Japanese. I think it's Chinese it's a Chinese RPG game. I downloaded it, started playing it, and I think it's pretty damn good. Too bad Xbox Xbox Share doesn't work on Twitter anymore. Because a lot of people will be showing off this game. This game is called. Um, oh my God! Come on, please show up. I don't want to butcher the name, but it's a. It's considered a, a Japanese RPG. Um, okay. And it's called. Come on, hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! I don't know what it's called. No, no, it's is my. It, is it the simulator thing that you're talking nah, about? No, no, not that. That game's decent. It's called Sword and Fairy Together Forever. It's by E Home Entertainment uh, Development, uh, Chinese studio. So, RPG, literally like your classic Final Fantasy type of game, honestly. It, but it's an action base. You played it? Yeah, I played it. And I'm actually gonna, probably going to be. I'm gonna, probably going to play through it. It's actually good. Now, there's no English dub or anything like that. It's full. They speak in full on Chinese, and then you got to read through subtitles. But the game is gorgeous. The combat is fluid and um, responsive. Few bugs here and there um, in the game, but they got some. It it plays well. Story seems interesting, and um, I think a lot of people would like it. Try it. Download it on Game Pass. A lot of people are trying to poke fun at the first half of July on Game Pass drops. I'm like, dude, it's not. There's no bad games in there. GTA's in there. Um, uh, the uh, Sword and Fairies in there. Mega Mega Pixel Three. I've also and then the whole Arcade Paradise, which I think is a, a dope game in, in my personal opinion. Um, and people were comparing that to what PlayStation Plus dropped, which was what Adam Wake Remaster. Um, Call of Duty Vanguard, and it's another game that they 
uh, put in there. Uh, I think the endless, the endless uh, extension forever or something like that. I played that game. That game is supposed to be like sad and intriguing. I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. Adam Wake. We've had Adam. I, I don't like Adam Wake as a game, and that's just my personal opinion. And Call of Duty Vanguard was the worst Call of Duty. It will be in Game Pass fairly soon. And I only want to play that for the campaign. So I might actually <laughs> uh, uh, download it on PlayStation. But uh, I do only I do want to play the campaign for Vanguard. Yeah, I think, I think when it comes down to it, man, like, you know, especially when it comes to like the Call of Duty stuff, yep. we're just going to have to see. You know, I, I'm not really a big Call of Duty fan. I don't even like really like the campaign like that. So like, I I, I don't lie when I say this this deal does essi- essentially nothing for me like at all. Hey, but man, I've never beaten a prototype game, so and I, I don't can own see any why of them. People like it so much though, so I, I I can agree on that. But me, it just doesn't do nothing for me particularly. You sure about that? Yeah, when have you ever seen me play any of these games? You played Overwatch. You got me on the Overwatch. It's, it's free to play though. It wasn't always free to play. And I mean, you would you would have a point if I didn't already have it. Yeah, but you but know, here's the thing: I I don't want something that I'm only going to enjoy like one time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like if like Sega, if they would have picked up Sega, there's multiple Sega games Fair enough. that I would enjoy. Blizzard, Overwatch. I like Overwatch not as much as I used to a couple years ago, mm-hmm. but I do like Overwatch. I think I played Overwatch two like twice. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I haven't played Overwatch a lot. There's a lot of games from Activision Blizzard that I'm interested in playing. I just don't own because I don't buy a lot of games at the rate that I used to. I don't own any of the prototypes. I will download prototype the day it joins Game Pass. I know it's been on sale, um, but I don't like I've, I don't own prototype. Don't even think I've uh, even played it. Like I played Infamous. Um, there's, you know, obviously did what this deal does. I'm, I guess there's some things I'm excited for, and there's some things that I'm excited for other people to experience. Like for example, Sekiro will come to Game Pass, right? Um, you got yeah, they were the publisher for that game. Yep. You also got now. There's a lot of backwards compatible games that they can. Wow renew the license for because activision used to do disney games marvel and fox and all that other stuff all those transformer games uh there's also oh my god why i'm a drum blank. also all the crash and spiral games haven't bought a single one of them but it will be on uh you no know, game pass and whatnot so um i, I it, no it's not again Activision Blizzard is not my pref- what it was it what is it my preferred publisher. I would have rather them do a Ubisoft, a Sega. I think out of spite, I I would have been excited for them to buy Square Enix just to see what PlayStation fanboys uh would do. Uh, but I I mean I don't know. It's um at it's at the time that we're recording this right. They they have not confirmed. They have not made decision on the abk deal but signs are pointing that you know the pi is probably going to be denied and hopefully by the time we are on our next episode that this is all behind us is still you know all in speculation and um we expect the judge to make a decision uh soon um probably maybe to start of next week so who knows man um trying to think what else we uh that we missed out on um anything happened this week i know last week we talked about uh a little bit about the you know the grubs got the the paid bots i know we talked about it on your channel you know well, we us. can talk about it a little bit on here yeah it's not like what boy ain't about to smoke all right so oh first off let, let, let me go over again on the aaron greenberg picture because mm-hmm. uh, i was in the picture yep uh, don't be listening to all these people. First off, Aaron Greenberg came to us. He was walking because we was in a the hotel that I think Microsoft has some form of like relationship with, and he came to us. He sat down and talked to us. 
technically he didn't even sit down. He he stood around and just was walking around the table just talking to people. And then yeah, you know, he was like he's the marketing person. He's like, "Yo, you mind if I take a picture?" So we had to uh cuz Co Eastwood's wife was there. Cuz if you notice, I don't think she's in that picture. She she might have took it. It was her or a waitress, one of the other ones. It was one of those two that took it. So she got up and gave her seat to him so we could take the picture. And we took the picture. He posted it. He walked around the table because he knew some of us, but not all of us, and got all our, our tags because that, that's the respectful thing to do if you're going to take pictures to get everyone's tag. And then he moved on with his day. That wasn't no no uh, meeting to discuss terms on how we we're going to be bought out. First off, if I'm being bought by anyone, it's, it's not being through a breakfast. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. You're taking me out to a lobster steak dinner. All right. You ain't doing that sort over breakfast. I'm not selling my soul yeah. for eggs and bacon. Yeah, eggs and okay? bacon. <laughs> so it, that, that's how it went. Like, look, like I get it. It's all fun and jokes. Uh, I do think some of these people, they're a little jealous. And I think some of these people are just taking stuff too far. That includes BG. Uh, Tim Dog is actually friends with, with Phil Spencer for years. How many times have you seen Tim Dog in a party with Phil Spencer? No, yeah, a couple. That That's, that's Almost, they've been there. All the time. Yeah. All the time. There, there's been times where I'd be like, yo, Tim, you know, we, 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 we need to get into this. We need to get into that. He's like, let me hit up Phil. Let me see what I can do for you guys. They, they got each other's personal phone number. It's like, look, like 88% of these executives are definitely just trying to hijack a platform, trying to get them to spill the stuff they want to. But Phil Spencer, and especially Phil Spencer and Tim Dog, that's genuine friendship. I'm friends with Jason Ronald. Did I, what? Remember when your your Xbox Live stuff was going messed up, and I personally yeah. reached out to Jason Ronald for yeah. you. Yeah. Like, look, like we're not going to say like when I went to E3, I was like, Jason, where where you at, man? I went to his hotel, and we went out and got got dinner. Like, I get it. Some of these that you see on Twitter is a little ridiculous. They are. But there are genuine friendships here. They are. I, I mean, I'm not friends with everyone. I'm not friends with Mike Yabarro when he left. There's actually some 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 back stories on that one. I'm friends with Bill Stilwell, the person that was in charge of cloud computing and, and, and actually was in charge of the team that made backwards compatibility. You know, he's actually yeah, got I people that. I know. Mm -hmm. He's got people I know jobs. So does that sound like a, not a friendship to you, Smooth? Yeah, like, it sounds like a good relationship that um, was built. And that's what this industry is about. Uh, gaming is, a, it's not like gaming is, is so different, right? From other forms of media. Um, you got to consider that, you know, there's the movie industry, there's the music industry, and not it's not every day that fans and consumers of music and movies can just interact with their favorite movie producer or the actors and stuff like that. They got to go to me. It just doesn't, it happen. doesn't happen. And gaming, that happens. It can happen. And it's because it's literally, you know, we're, we're all gamers. And the fact that we got, we've got to this point where stuff like that is frowned upon uh, because, you know, people, it doesn't happen with all. Oh, Xbox is, is a close knit community. It's, you know, great things happen. Um, and, and it just, it's a bunch of jealousy. I don't even think some of it's some, some people have jealousy. Some don't, you know, uh, with the BG thing, I don't think that's necessarily jealousy. I think that's just him looking at stuff at face value. BG don't know what goes on by unclosed. BG don't know that Phil Spencer, when he's in, when he's in, uh, Tim dog's neighborhood, they always go out and get dinner together. You know what I'm saying? This isn't just like Tim dog asking, like, Phil will come into into where he lives because I'm gonna throw out like Tim Dog's like city he lives in, and Phil will reach out to Tim Dog and say, "Yo, when you got time, let's go out and get some lunch or something." Like BG don't know about that, so that that's one thing. But there are some of these people that will sit there and they will cap acting like a PlayStation and hit them up smooth and be like, "Here's Last of Us Part Three, here's a review code." You think they're gonna say no? 
No, it's too. No, absolutely. I, not. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hit my integrity. I ain't doing that. You know <laughs> what? I'm gonna go out there and spend seven to eighty dollars probably at the time that game comes out. You know, probably gonna raise it ten dollars by then. I'm gonna buy it because I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna even remotely look like I'm a shell. Between me and you, smooth, almost seventy percent of the games we get is review codes. Mm -hmm. Would you not agree? Yeah. So people just don't trust our opinions on stuff at all, ever. Now, BG's gotten review codes. We're going to start li not listening to him. Yeah, I mean, you don't buy reviews, right? You can't, you, you don't pay for them. So, I mean, and, and, and the thing is, even when we get re review codes, some of it is not even from like the direct team now, unless you have that uh, connection. But um, I think it's an overreaction, I, you know, from people. And it's like, I think it's just content. It's content driven. People see the content they can make, they mm -hmm. make it. I don't think the majority of these people for one second think that people are bought or anything like that. Because, yeah. Because if you, if you look at it from a, a like, like a perception wise that people sitting there say, oh, ILP is bought. Smooth, how many times did we go in on that? ILP is here? well funded. <laughs> We're well funded, man. I heard that, man. And I'm like, man, I wish I was well. Who are they talking about, man? Yeah, they're well funded. Like, I gotta go ask them for a loan. <laughs> Dirt Griggity, he he's a, he's a new black guy. He's a token black guy. <laughs> and, and you know what's crazy too, dude? It's like Dirt's been grinding for years. Yeah. You know, Dirt. I put I brought him on ILP because I really liked his vibe. I liked his energy, and, and, and we have good chemistry doing that. You know, my my ideal third would be you, but it, it's just like. It, the sad part is people like dirt, people that are growing, people that have grinded. We've all grinded, mm -hmm. but to look at looking, especially over a race car, look at dirt and say you only in the position you are because you black. Like that is, that is so disrespectful, like crazy amounts disrespectful. You know, I, I we IOP has been doing this since two thousand sixteen. 2016. Yeah. And you mean to tell me the only reason we've gotten the places we have because we are bought. I've went out. I have went after Bonnie Ross on ILP saying that if she can't get her shit together, she needs to be let go. I've went out multiple people. There's a couple episodes where I said Phil Spencer might not be it. I got to see more. There's times where I said they, they need to stop buying studios and just holding down the studios they have now making games and nurturing studios and the part that you you see all this you just got a bunch of people that don't watch content they probably don't watch anyone's content but they need to make the content themselves and when you when you drive your your channel of other people's names you get in this weird situation where it doesn't matter what's the truth it matters what is headlines what can generate super chats? What can generate people in a in a chat? What can generate likes so you oh, more people could see it? What can get me the attention from a bigger PlayStation dude to come in here and tag team these people with me? That's all that matters. You know, I I I'm, I guarantee you the majority of these people, they don't think anyone's bought, but they know they need content. Yeah, I'm just surprised they like uh ran with it um but that's the uh you know the the playstation community uh for you i i still think it's the worst community in gaming um Not far because you don't see you don't even see i mean you see some weird like sexual stuff from switch people and nintendo fans yeah. some of them uh, but you you see that if you gave the same tools that nintendo has to other games you're gonna mm -hmm. see that there too yeah uh you know xbox people i do think that you know we need to be better on speaking about games and not hardware and acquisitions and PlayStation people just need to get a fucking life. Yeah. I don't think, like, I don't think PlayStation uh, gamers are actually having um, fun. I don't think they're enjoying anything they got because the thing is they have to, the thing is for, they literally, it feels like the way they operate is that they have to prove to us that they're having fun there, that they're enjoying uh their games and stuff like that and and truthfully it's not it and what did i say 
two weeks ago and what did i say last week about final fantasy 16 in its sales that it will drop yeah. off significantly yeah and it's yeah. dropped off significantly in the uk it's dropped off significantly in japan and uh, i'm pretty sure it's gonna it's fall. not a final fantasy game it's an action pace in the final fantasy world it's mm. the highest quality of spinoff you can do it's a final fantasy spinoff game i put it in the same vein that i would put something like um Final Fantasy Origins, whatever the hell that game was. Oh, that dude, you would put it there. Uh, Dirge not... of Cerberus. Like, this game should have been Final Fantasy Origin. This would have mm -hmm. been a good game mm -hmm. if it wasn't a mainline Final mm -hmm. Fantasy fan. When you put Final Fantasy and you put that main number, that 15, that 16, that 10, that 11, that 12, well, 12, 11 and 14 are MMOs. But if you put it behind that main number, it comes with expectation. It comes with people have a certain thing that they expect to see yep. in these games. Yep. And when you don't see those key components, those key foundations that made the Final Fantasy brand the Final Fantasy brand, they have every right to be upset. Uh, this Final Fantasy could have been very much on the Xbox. There's nothing special or unique or uh, Japanese, honestly, about it. That it's a Western game. Well, it's just PlayStation bought the exclusivity. Yeah. And you know what's funny? I hope the game does well, but at this point, if it had that much of a drop off, five million. I, I'm seeing five to eight million. This game ain't though. selling eight million at all. It's selling. Uh, I think. Yeah, when it comes to Xbox it, and PC, but here, you you got to look at it. When stuff, go, I'm talking about sales. When you drop something down to ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, you pick up two hundred thousand here, three hundred thousand mm -hmm. here, a hundred thousand here. That mm -hmm. that matters. Yeah. Uh, uh, shout out to Fami and T Level One Gaming. I just want to give him a shout. Out. He wrote an article. Uh, uh, was it today or yesterday? It's called Console Wars, a lucrative opportunity for journalists and YouTubers. And he's uh, summarizes in his article uh, pretty much the events and how YouTubers and journalists takes advantage of the console wars and how it becomes more beneficial to them and them picking sides, them poking a bear and pretty much uh, them really walking the line. Everybody knows that the console war is profitable. A lot of failed YouTubers, failed content creators and other avenues, failed right. producers and failed game developers and other avenues literally have come to the console war to have a revival, bro. It, I mean, don't, don't we have like a Blizzard employee doing this shit now? Yes, or a Blizzard employee. Degree? I don't think he's got a channel or something like that. He's just having some crazy hot takes. Isn't that what started all of us being shells? Like, yeah, yeah. Is that take the thing is he said his take was he had a, he said a comment about game you pass gotta do right it in that voice. You gotta do it in that voice. What voice? The mm. <laughs> Would you like I, I make No, it, it's when you do that annoying that when you say something, it, 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 it's when you mimic PlayStation fans. Okay. Uh I don't know if it's like when I'm like um damn. Just keep going. All right. So the place. Uh, ex so this dude said he was pretty much commenting on like the the idea of Game Pass is that we're pretty much uh, it's like going to the casino. You're buying in cheap so that they can monetize aggressively monetize us uh, through the games. And um, people were confused because the first thing i said when i saw that comment was like well what do you call nba 2k madden and gta who charges you 70 bucks for the game and still monetize the hell out of you with an upfront cost like i don't i don't understand i like how you you say game pass is but then again you 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 subscribe to game pass and you get a game like a plague tale that has no post game dlc no end game monetization Right. So it's like I have everybody, all this stuff that they're trying to put a uh, fear monger us about Game Pass and that how it's going to it's going to change how games are developed and how it's going to change the type of games that come out and how developers make games. I have we haven't gotten a single game that's heavily monetized. That was a, 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 a Game Pass flagship game. The biggest game literally coming out is going to be what Starfield. Right. The biggest games that if you come out with the biggest games like each year that have come out since game pass has been extremely popular um none of them have felt like free to play free, uh, uh premium free to play games at all and those games like the maddens the 2ks and 
uh, the GTAs are coming out at full freaking price and still overly monetizing you for each thing battle passes season passes vc um in in game purchases microtransactions and these they, they come with an upfront cost but yet people are applying this to game pass and we haven't had a single evident uh evidence of this yet your thoughts but that that's what sparked his the, the debate because we all came at him for that and because that tweet like blew up with a bunch of replies, he called us paid bots and uh, fake accounts and stuff like that. And then you got people like Red Dragon, Nicola, and all them. Like you know, they uh, you know backed it because he was saying something against the Xbox. And people love when somebody criticizes the Xbox and uh, and Xbox uh, the fan base. It it does something for the, their ego. It, it becomes like a safe haven, and. Um, and we have stuff like this happens. It happens to them all. Um, and this, you get situations like him and Reforge Gaming and um, all these other dudes who just want to jump into the console um, war and, 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 and try to find some sort of like stable, stable. They're creating stables. Um, yeah, some, some of them are extremely entertaining to it. Some of them I wouldn't listen to like at all. You know, even though that like some friction like with next gen yep. has been happening, you can never tell me that next gen doesn't do what he does very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, he's 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 good at putting on a show. He is a these, comedian. Yeah. Some of some of these people want that type of entertainment, but mm -hmm. they 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 not like they just not. They they they're the type of you know amateur stand up that get booed off the stage. So it's you know if you want to be in that vein, you got to step it up. No, you're right. You're you're absolutely right. So um, all right, we we can get ready to wrap this show up. Um, going in just an an hour and uh, some change. Um, ah uh, man, there was something that came across my mind, and I'm forgetting. You got anything going on uh, this week? Anything that you're playing? Um, right now I'm playing Loop Hero. I'm also been playing Final Fantasy 16. I, I I went back to 16, but I'm probably dropping it for good this time. I I, I don't know. Pro I want to finish it because I've been told the story is actually good, so I'll probably eventually do it. But right now I'm really enjoying Loop Hero. I definitely recommend that. I've been playing uh you know some games on PC. I, actually, I'm playing Loop Hero on Game Pass on PC because I want those achievements. Uh, but it's been a pretty good thing, man. You know, I, I've been playing Persona 5 again. Yep. Trying to actually finish it because I've started that game like eight different times and I actually have never finished it. Really, uh, you know, enjoy playing the exact same parts of the damn game I've already played. Uh, but I'm getting farther and farther into that game. I do want to make sure I'm done with everything before that, before that new Like a Dragon game comes out next year. Yep. Uh, so we got Starfield coming out next year. Hopefully, I'll get my hands on a preview here pretty soon. Hopefully, I, I don't know. We yeah, looking really, forward to uh, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I think it's been good, man. I think it's been good. I think we'll uh, I think we'll start to see some. This has been a good year. You know, I still got to go back to Resident Evil Four Remake. Mm -hmm. I've not, I haven't beat that yet. I still got to play some really fun indie games. I'm going to PAX West in um, September. So okay. I'm going to Washington State. Uh, I'll be there for like five days. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I will we'll probably that week, we'll have to do Planet Xbox like before I leave. Okay. Yeah, because I'll leave on a Friday. Yeah, so no, I'll, I'll leave on the 31st. So we'll have to do that Wednesday if you really want to get it done. When you say thirty first, is it the thirty first of what? Of of August. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, so it's a Wednesday. I'll probably I could just grab dirt and we do a planet Xbox and not attic show that week. Yeah, that'd be good. Um shout out to Dirk. Um I'm I got oh, nothing. It, it, and I will say one thing, you know. I, I'm going to give Planet Xbox a little inside scoop. Uh, I'm not going to give the the person because, uh, you know, Smooth knows who it is. 
But we're going to have a big guest on ILP on the 23rd of this month. Big influencer, dude. You guys know who the individual is. We've mm-hmm. never had him on the show, so I think you guys will enjoy it. Yep, I'm looking forward to that episode, too. We're going to watch uh, uh, watch that as well. Um, as far as uh, gaming, I, I, just, uh, I have to go back to... I still haven't beat in games like... Um, Damn, um, Atomic Heart. I haven't I'm beaten that. I haven't beaten Hogwarts Legacy, even though I was deep into it. I need it, to I go back playing. to that. I do think I need to gotta go back to that. Um I started replaying Wolong. Uh, I, I don't know. Didn't it's the a DLC fun game. just come out? The DLC did come out, but I'm not even playing DLC content. I'm literally just because I forgot that the in-game content was like you would go and you clear all these battlefields and stuff like that, or different parts you of the fight map. Your own teammates, and stuff. yeah. Like, and yeah, I just that's been rough. In, There's I, one time where you have to fight like three people at the same time, and they're all pretty beefy. Yeah. And then I think the last ones you fight the, you know how like at the beginning when you did the tutorial and there's yeah. that old dude at the top. Yeah. I think the last ones you fight him. No, the last one is you fight the last boss when he gets like his head clear. You know how like. You, he t- reverts back to his old self, like the the boss. Yeah, the last ones you fight that dude. Yeah, so Wolong's a good game. Still on Xbox Game Pass. If you you know haven't checked it out, it came out earlier this year. It, well, I mean, it was my early game of the year um, when it came would, out. We would still have access to it because I got that review copy. So yeah, yeah. No, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. But just look for people. You know, it's it, it's in you know Game Pass. Um, I G- wonder because they I don't know what version they gave me. We might have we might have the DLC. I believe I we do. I, be- I believe we do. Um, Jilt came out uh, on consoles and PC today. This was that Stadia exclusive. It was like a first party Stadia game. Um, it's now made its way to the consoles and platforms that people actually play. It's not stuck in the cloud. Um, you can play this on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Jilt uh, it was a good game. It was one of the best games that came out on Stadia last year. Um, it's not a Game Pass, but I might pick that, uh, pick it up at some point um, uh, soon. But um, looking forward to checking that out. I did actually play Jilt for the first time on Xbox via Stadia. I was subscribed to Stadia, and I was able to go to Stadia.com and play it on Xbox, uh, uh, which was interesting. Um, you know. We know what we should do. We should do like an extra thing uh, the next couple of weeks. I don't know when we would be able to do it because it wouldn't be planned at Xbox. Yeah. But we should rank like all the Xbox games. You should get Black Bond doing it with us. Rank all that sounds like a long ass process. Honestly. No, like like just the key franchises, like not okay. not like all the games. Like I'm talking about like the first party key franchises. Mm-hmm. There might be 20, 30 of those. That might take like an hour. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. There'd be some good Patreon content. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Bond there, because you and him and me will probably argue every step of the way. Yeah, Bond. We're you know, thinking he knows it all, but yeah, I think that would be interesting to do. All right. So thank you guys for, you know, you know, tuning in. Another episode of Play Xbox Podcast. We hit our 90 minute mark once again and uh because we're, we're, we're definitely good at that and we made a podcast on something and there is no news like the xbox abk deal didn't close and uh we were able to put together a show and have something uh for you guys so we definitely appreciate you guys tuning in for, uh thank you guys for supporting uh the patreon and uh so um we'll see you guys next week uh with episode nine uh we'll remind bg to post the questions so you get those questions in early um and continue uh bringing us the feedback uh for the show um we appreciate you know everyone shout to attic iron lords podcast ilp every sundays um 1 p.m uh you guys do you guys still alter during football season no we stopped that yeah so definitely catch me 1 p.m on sundays we stopped altering for the football season because at that point, it's like there was just too much. Oh, can you make it this day? Oh, can we have to wait? And then I didn't like the early stuff. Uh, I would prefer because 11 o'clock was early for me, especially when I worked graveyard shift. So we, we don't bend the knee to football anymore. We get it. 
if you're going to watch football, watch football, but we'll see you after the season. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. But we go early, 1 p.m., so, like, you'll see the majority of the games. Because when it's the football season, we don't try to do four or five-hour shows. Yeah. We try to be out of there in three. Yeah. Um, yeah, because the, 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 the four o'clock games are the best games, so. But uh, shout out to every uh, one. Shout out to Weapon Wheel Podcast. That's every Sundays at... 5 45 p.m. Eastern and uh check out channel. I'm gonna try to put some content out this week um and uh try to go from there, keep the grind going. But again, once again, thank you guys for joining us. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you on the other side of the globe. We out out of here. Peace.